Welcome to Beyond Words Presents. I'm your host, Whitney Kwan, and today I am thrilled to be here with Mary Rockwood Lane and Michael Samuels, the authors of Healing with the Arts, a 12-step program to healing yourself and your community. Um, and today we have a slightly different format. I'm really excited about this. We're actually going to experience a workshop. Mary and Michael have been teaching workshops about healing with the arts for years, and today we get a glimpse into that. It's a shortened workshop, but today they are going to give us uh, a little bit of a treat. Mary and Michael, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank, thank you. you. We're excited. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And so everybody knows, remember, if you would like to submit a question, use the hashtag BWPresents, or you can also submit your question using the QR, or excuse me, the Q&A uh, app in Google Hangouts. So um, Mary and Michael, uh, take it away. Hi, I'm Mary Rockwood Lane, and I am so excited that you're going to be here for this time for us to share a workshop with you and Dr. Michael Samuels, and I wrote this book, Healing with the Arts, and it's a 12-week program that we want to bring you that you can use art, dance, music, um, any of the arts that you are interested in in a way that you can re-engage in what you're most passionate about and use that as your own personal health care and medicine. So Michael will tell you a little bit more about himself, so I'd like us to go ahead and introduce Dr. Michael Samuels. Hello, I'm happy to be here. Uh, and uh, Both Mary and I have been involved in dealing with the arts for uh, 20 plus years. She teaches the course at the University of Florida. I teach in San Francisco State. It's called Art and Healing. And what we're going to do with you today is essentially Art and Healing from our course, which is from our book. And what we believe is that um, all of us have within us an inner healer who, man who does our blood flow, our heartbeat, our immune system. And this is our body. And we also have within us an inner artist that connects with our spirit, with our soul. And when you, people talk about body, mind, spirit, medicine, it, healing with the arts is the best way to engage spirit into your healthcare. And that's what it is. It's a doorway to messages from your deep soul, your spirit, God, your spirit guides, your ancestors to heal you. And it works for everything. It works for physical, mental, uh, spiritual concerns. And it, we, in fact, use it for everything in our class. Mary? Yes. Well, what we do is first I'd like to tell you a little bit of how powerful the arts and healthcare is in many clinical settings. For example, here at the University of Florida, they have an arts and medicine program where we actually have artists, musicians, dancers, poets, and theater that actually work at the bedside with patients who are in a variety of settings. Many are in intensive care units, the emergency room, in the waiting rooms, and we really explored how powerful this modality was in people's lives who were actually very sick. And I spent my first part of my career in implementing this program, really engaging it with patients in many different clinical settings, and then did research to really understand what, what it was about art that was so powerful and so healing. And this book is from 20 years of research where we have looked at many different ways this program has been implemented in healthcare, and also looking at ways this program has been implemented at a university system as well as in school systems. So it's been actually implemented in many different places with powerful results. We want to bring you this program directly into your life. We want to invite you to engage in your own way of creativity engage in what you're most passionate about and remember yourself everyone is an artist and you are an artist and that artist is a healer what we want to do is invite you to engage with this 12-week program that's explicitly outlined in this book healing with the arts and today we're going to do a mini workshop we're actually going to do a beginning we want to start with Get, we'll do a, an exercise. We, Michael's going to do a beautiful guided imagery, and then I'm going to talk about the journal, how it, and part of this process is creating your own personal journal, and I'll show you that journal. And then we'll do some exercises where you can actually make art. 
So if you have an opportunity to have some paper, some pencils, if you have some art supplies near, grab them and be ready to make some art with us right today. So we welcome you to be here with us because we really believe and know it to be true that everyone is an artist and the artist within you is also your connection to the healer that is within you because we all heal ourselves. The power of our healing lies within ourselves, within our bodies, within our minds, within our spirit, and within our very emotions. So thank you for being here. We look forward to this time together. The first thing Mary and I, we teach what I call ECHO courses. She teaches art and healing. University of Florida Graduate School and Undergraduate. I teach it at San Francisco State and JFK. And the 12 weeks of, the, of our course are the 12 chapters in our book. And we'll do kind of a fast first day with you today, which we're really excited about. And the first thing we usually do is introduce ourselves a little bit. And I'm a physician who's worked with guided imagery and art with cancer patients, patients of life-threatening illness, crisis, and fertility for 30 years. I was in the alternative cancer community and uh, worked a lot with cancer patients. And one of the things that we do three things in the beginning. I'll introduce myself a little, Mary introduce herself a little, and we'll tell you a little bit about art and healing so you're kind of grounded to begin this work. Right now, most uh, major hospital university systems like University of San Francisco, USF, UCSF, University of Florida have arts and medicine programs. I think more than half of the large university systems and hospitals have arts and healing in them. So what you're doing is very deeply grounded in programs that see cancer patients, see children with leukemia, see people with heart disease, see people on, in University of Florida it's on 15 units, Mary, or more, there's hundreds of artists and residents, and this is something that's deeply grounded in research and is now used for, uh, for cancer, for heart disease, for most things in hospitals. It's a major, if not the major, treatment for Alzheimer's. It's used in post-traumatic stress for veterans. It's used in post-traumatic stress for women who've been raped or done child abuse. And when we do our course, we do something very special. We say we're going to find the artist within, which we're going to do with you in a guided imagery, and we're going to find what needs to be healed. And then you're going to do an artist, an actual piece of art to begin to have your artist within work on what needs to be healed. So in our classes, what needs to be healed, and what we say, first I'll, I'll ground a little bit, and then we'll let Mary talk, but art is for us, music, dance, visual arts, and word, and music is listening to music, playing music, singing, dancing is movement, even yoga and tai chi and things like that, but it's a uh, free dance. Word can be theater, poetry, uh, any uh, free-form words, music, again, can be even chanting or humming, and visual arts can be painting, photography, all these things. But we also include cooking, gardening, even taking care of your family. That's why we say everyone is an artist and everyone's a healer. And what our thesis is, what, our, what we're doing is art heals yourself for what you need to be healed in your life. It heals others, your mother, your father, your children, people in a hospital program, kids with leukemia. It heals community, which is uh, elders, a minority group, and it heals the earth, which is rivers. And that's been our mission statement for 30 years, and that's what we do with the class. So we invite you now, just in the back of your mind as you're listening to us, daydream and drift, and what, what needs to be healed in your life? Who is it? You, your family? But just let that flow, because we'll get to it. Mary? Who are you? Yeah. And talk a little. Well, I'm, Do I'm Dr. Mary Rockwood Lane. I'm a professor at the College of Nursing at the University of Florida. Um, I was the founder of the Arts and Medicine program at Shands Hospital, which was one of the first arts programs that brought artists to the bedside to work with patients and family. And I've been teaching this program for the last 20 years and doing research. And I also have had the opportunity to travel internationally and integrate this program into hospitals, really focusing on nurses and artists working together at the bedside. And through my experiences of really bringing this 
experience to individuals. I have found the power of healing is a very personal experience. And what we wanted to bring you is you engaging in your own creativity. You thinking about what is it in your life that needs to be healed? What is it that you haven't had time for? Time to attend to? Time to focus on? That you've maybe pushed away and neglected a part of yourself that needs to be expressed? And this is an invitation. This moment right now, in this day, this year, wherever it is you are, this is an invitation for you to reclaim the artist within you. This artist within you, whether it's you've made art before or haven't made art in years or never made art, this artist within you holds the key to your creative life force. And this life force, when you engage your life force and you engage your whole self, in making art, focusing on something that needs to be healed in your life is so transform transformative. You can transform your life in ways that you can't imagine. Because what we understand and what we have learned, when we use art as a way of healing, we are re-engaging our brain, our memories, our life patterns. We're reconstructing them. The process of of creativity literally when you take a painting and you take a canvas and colors and brushes that act in and of itself is very transformative you can take what is all these pieces and next thing you know you create a painting and this painting has feelings and life and story and color and visual images and the painting is literally a metaphor a reflection of what's happening inside of you when you make that art. It's truly an expression of you. And what we've discovered in this process that when you start in the place where maybe you have a wound, this place of woundedness is where we begin because that's the place that the light goes through. And that's the place where we open ourselves up to this portal of energy and it's almost like this mysterious part of yourself becomes actualized in the making of the art. Whether it's a dance, whether it's a words in a poem, whether it's a painting, this is an expression that is emerging from you. And we know with many years of doing this that this part of you is telling the truth. This part of you is authentically who you are. This part of you is being expressed and allows you to create a witness, an inner witness to your own, your own experience. So you're able to contemplate, reflect, and learn something more deeply about yourself. And it also creates a shift in your physiology that allows you to reprogram, repattern, restory these experiences in your life and transform them into something new, which is your art. I'd like to invite Michael to talk about the research that this is based on before we go actually into one of the creative processes What I want to engage in. Um, right now is an exciting time for art and healing and an exciting time for mind, body, spirit medicine because there's wonderful new research that's teaching us things we didn't know. The first part about how art heals which we've known for many years, is that when you go into a state of creativity, your body goes into an autonomic nervous system shift of relaxation and healing. It goes from fear and uh, terror of running away from something or stress to this expansive daydreaming state, where even if you're, what you're remembering is problematic, it's being remembered in a soft place where you're safe and at home. And this shift changes your physiology to enhance your immune system and to change your hormones from stress hormones to relaxation hormones and it releases neurotransmitters. But now we know a lot more than this. We know something really that's pretty wonderful from studies done at MIT. And what we know is that all of us have memories and we have memories of trauma or memories of something we're worried about or memories of illness. So when someone says to you what needs to be healed, 
something comes up. It, there's been a, a childhood abuse. There's been you know, a grandmother died that you worried about. There's problems with the relationship. And you focus on this in your mind. And this cells of, of, in your brain are stimulated by this memory. And then we're inviting you to make art. So what happens is you take that memory, which can be dark or problematic, and you deal with it. You don't have to deal with it with words or analysis. You just have it. And then say you're a dancer. And say you say, and, and one of the things our book has, it has the real life stories of many, many, many people from our 20 years of teaching. So one woman was going to, she decided what needed to be healed in her life was a rape. And she was going to heal it by dance, a violent rape. So she remembered a little bit of it in a safe place with helpers, which we'll do with you in an exercise. And then she had a movement of a dance, just a beautiful movement. And first the movement was pushing it away, because the movements come from a healing place within you where you know how to heal, from spirit. And the next thing that happens is a huge surprise in this process. She imagines the moon goddess is with her helping her push it away. And then she imagines she is the moon goddess. And for everyone, it's completely surprising and completely individual. Because creative art is creative. And then the next thing you know, she's ascending and she's strong. And what they've discovered at MIT is that these new experiences, when they take place, while the memory is there, extinguish the memory and replace it. And that's how art heals post-traumatic stress veterans. They remember what happened in Afghanistan and Iraq, and they make a painting, and the memory of what happened slides away, and the beauty of the painting comes, and they're empowered and healed. So what we're inviting you to do is, and, and it, it, it works for anything. It works for, and the, second, the third way, which I'll do very quickly because I'm talking too much, is for Alzheimer's, for example. The forgetfulness and the loss of recent memory in Alzheimer's is hippocampal and frontal lobes. When you're making art, you use visual, you use auditory, you use touch, you use all kinds of areas of the brain that are not involved in memory loss. Those areas wake up and they have memory. That's why for Alzheimer's patients, when you sing a song from their childhood, they can literally wake up from a coma. They're very advanced in Alzheimer's and actually sing with you because it's bypassing these brain areas. So what your brain is doing is it's forming new neural circuits to create memory and strength and joy and love. So really, the, so just to sum it up very quickly, art heals three ways. One way is it puts you in a relaxation and healing mode with your hormones and neurotransmitters. The second is it puts the new memory in, replaces the traumatic memory. And the third is it forms new neural circuits. So this is all, you don't have to know any of these things to do what we're doing. You can even be daydreaming now about what, but it is very cool, and it's nice since it is used in every major cancer center in America, really, to have a basis for it and to make it clearer and easier for us to use. Merrick? Well, I'd like us to begin to participate in the mystery of this healing process. So I'd like to start out with doing a guided imagery, and I was thinking that Michael and I could, I could start it and then he could continue it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite you in this moment um, to get very comfortable and I would recommend if you're lying down, you can lie down or sit in a chair. If you're sitting in a chair, I'd like to ask you to put both feet on the ground and feel yourself grounded and completely supported by the chair. And as we begin this guided imagery, we begin to focus on our breathing and you invite yourself to become very open and softly close your eyes and when you close your eyes I would like to ask you to open your third eye and open your heart and open your mind and open your body Take a deep breath, settle into your body, allowing yourself to become completely relaxed. And as you breathe, allow your body to soften and your edges to become soft and tender. 
as you sit in this moment, simply relax and focus on your breath. Allow yourself to accept the invitation of this journey to go deeper within. Breathe softly in and out. Imagine around you there is a sacred place. This is a space in which you are safe, you are at home, and you are comfortable. I'm going to begin this meditation and guided imagery by asking you to visualize a soft candlelight in your heart and see this soft flame in the center of your heart. Focus on your heart as if you would focus on your big toe, but focus on the area right around your heart. In your mind's eye, see this saw small candlelight becoming larger and more illuminated and allow this light to flicker with the golden, the orange, the blue, allowing this flame and this light to illuminate the entire center of your heart. Now imagine this light expanding and filling your entire body. Imagine this expanding outside your body two to three to four, five feet, feeling your energetic field expanding in the illumination of this light. Allow the light to fill the room and feel this space as a sacred space in which you are safe and you have total freedom to be exactly who you are. You are perfect in this moment. Your story is your story. Now in this moment, remember or ask yourself what it is in your life or within your body that needs to be healed. And dwell for a moment, bringing that forth in this moment. From this place of darkness that's within the light, allow yourself to open, open to the possibilities of beginning this journey. Michael, would you like to add to this journey? Yeah, at this point you're in a safe place and you're allowing kind of things in your life that are feeling to arise and people have many things so don't worry about it if one comes on another and what I'd like you to do now is invite any spirits, friends, helpers, ancestors, spirit animals, grandmothers, religious teachers, religious figures to be there with you so you're not alone. I think in my way of looking at the world all of us we're not alone we have people who love us and have what loves you the most come to you. And if you've got spirit animals, let them come. If you have a grandmother who is a painter, let her come. If you are religious and believe in Jesus or Mary or something like that, let it come. And have them be with you in this moment and protect you as you go into this memory of... of but remember right now yourself, right now you're in a room. Whatever is, needs to be healed is not happening to you. You're calm and you're there right now. And I think now what, what I'd like to do is we're combining different things because we're moving quicker than our class is 
of remember now, we'll do a little shift, and remember the part of your body that knows how to heal from infections, that heals when your bones break, that heals from a cold. That's your inner healer. And just wait a minute and remember this part of your body. See if you can feel it. You have within you what heals you. Even when a doctor does an operation, he doesn't make the cells join and make the tissues join and make the skin join. You do that. Your body does it. And then we'll allow that to rest a minute. And now let's find your inner artist. That's your inner healer. And your inner artist can be a painter, poet, dancer, a musician, a gardener, cook, a loving mother. And let your inner artist come to and see yourself making art, maybe as a child, when you were most free, without a critic, without criticism. You're going to let a critic go here. You're making art to heal. Critic has no point. And then the inner artist and the inner healer pop together. Become one. And now you're in a place to begin this work. You've got your inner artist and inner healer as one. You maybe can glimpse an art process. And you kind of have a little feeling maybe for what needs to be healed in your life. And that's the beginning of our process. So now we'll have you wake up, come out, pull all the parts of you that are out into the center of your body, push your backside down against the chair, push your feet hard against the floor, make a fist so you can feel your body, and come back in. Don't stay out. And then slowly, slowly come back to the room and where you are. But this time you're coming back a really different person. You're coming back to the inner artist and the healer is one, which is unbelievably powerful and you're coming back with the first winds of the first winds of of um, <laughs> of your of what's going on in your life that needs to be healed so um we're back mary great welcome back now this is the part that's really essential in this process is this integration of the artist with the healer and releasing the inner critic. And in the book, in the first chapter, we talk about this even more extensively. But this is the process that we invite you to engage in by actually bringing these two aspects of yourself together and releasing the part of you that holds you back, the part of you that's critical of yourself, or says that you're not good enough. Now in this moment, I would like you, I'd like to invite you to actually make some art. Now I'd like you to have a piece of paper and bring some markers. You don't have to have a lot of colors at this point in time because you may not have them yet. And But I invite you to bring your paper and your pen and you can even do it with a regular pencil. You can make art anywhere. I want you in this moment to draw what the artist within you looks like. What does this artist look like? If you could be any artist that you want to be without any limitation and no risk of failing, what would your artist love to do? Would your artist love to paint? Would your artist draw? Would your artist dance? Would your artist garden? Would your artist decorate your room? Would you create a beautiful space? Would you write poetry? Would you listen to your favorite music? What is it in this moment comes up for you? And that's the right answer. So begin to draw something. And then I will share with you some of the drawings that I've done when I've done this exercise. And I'll show you my journals. Because part of this process is putting your artwork in a journal. So why don't you begin right now and take a few minutes just to draw, to draw your artist. And I will simply play the singing bowl to keep you in that relaxed state. Now, when we do this with our class, we give them very simple instructions because this process is actually unbelievably simple. They have we pass out sheets of paper and some colored pencils, and what we say is, anything you want to, nothing or something that you saw in our guided anything, or 
You can write a word down. You saw nothing like a color wash. They're just doodle, make doodles. There's no wrong answer. What's happening is you're intentionally making art together. And what comes out is exactly right. No one will see it. It's not an art show. You're not going to be criticized by anyone. And this first step can be whatever you want and then go to the next step. And we have people basically after a guided image, we will have them draw up for 15 minutes or half hour. And later, like concrete, later, plant. And that way they get to do all the things. So at least. And in our book, we have a chapter on dance, a chapter on poetry, a chapter on uh, visual arts. So you can get to try each of these things. But basically, if you, the inner artist and the inner healer are one, we did it, whether you know it or not, whether it's open or whether it's open or whether it's And the names of what you need to know will come to you. And that really is the process. And now you just let it come. You make art and it will come. You'll figure out whether you want to write poems. You'll figure out whether you want to draw. Right now, one of the students, small animals, stick figures, your spirit guide, some an event that happened to you, anything. Okay. So in this moment, Whatever you're drawing intuitively, one of the things that's about this process is trusting the intuition of what emerges naturally. Not trying to make it look like anything, just allowing it to be. One of the things I've found with people who say, I'm not an artist, they discover that in the making of the art, there's tremendous power and just letting it be, even if it's a stick-like or childlike drawing. So I want to share with you one of my drawings that can, you can see when I'm just scribbling. And this is actually an image, let's see if I can get it to you, an image of just like a portrait I just drew. And it's a self-portrait where what I'm asking myself is what is it that I want to do in my life right now? And I've spent many years writing, and I haven't engaged in my actual painting as much. So one of the things I discovered that I love when I doodle is I love to draw portraits of people, and I love to draw self-portraits, and I really am fascinated with figurative work. And I love that. I can just feel that it feels good and it feels natural. So that comes up for me, it's like wanting to be who I truly am in genuine grace. That was the name of that piece. So, you know, whatever you drew, if we had an opportunity, I'd love for all of you to share. But since you're alone, and maybe in some of the time when we do answers and questions, I invite you to share what it is that you drew. Then what I'd like you to do from this process is take this piece and put it in a journal. Part of the 12 week program is creating a journal. And this is an example of one of my journals that I do a lot of collaging on. I collage it and I do Mod Podge glue and I make all these collages. And what I end up doing in my journal is I create a journal where I put like special photographs, special cards, drawings that I do that I love. I love to make collages. I make collages that I integrate photographs in and also cutouts from magazines. And one of the fun things I have found that's really easy to begin with is just collect some of your favorite magazines and get some glue sticks and scissors. And just begin to pull out images that, re that you just like, that you respond to, that click with you. And don't ask yourself what it means. Just collect them in a shoebox. And then when you want to sit down and work with your journal, whether it's drawing, whether it's doing um, pastels, whether it could just be collaging, you can begin to, you know, and I always, I have a fun time because I like taking magazines and I like integrating them with my photographs. 
And what I've done, a lot of my journals, is take old photographs, cut them out, make collages, and then write stories of my life. And what I have found is I've been doing this for years. I, and you know, my, my journals are very, you know, every's journal, everybody's journal is different. Everybody's journal is like your personality, but it's like making your own studio. Keep your journal with you, you know, look around your life, see what images attract you, keep them, and then you begin to, you begin to create this journal. And this journal can become very precious. This journal is something that you can sort of play with every day. Like here's something, this is an image of in my journal that actually is my to-do list with an image of myself, like being a warrior and like all the things I have to do, I made them little flowers. So it's like really bringing that creative spark, that creative energy into your life in as many ways as possible. So Michael, do you want to share more about the journal writing? Because the journal writing to me is one of the most fun parts because you can actually, it can be messy, it can be collages, it can be your personal writings, your own reflections. Sometimes, you know, people who are in the course, they, they write their own poetry or they collect their own poetry, they collect their favorite poetry. So there's so many ways that the journal is very integral into this 12-week program. And it really documents this experience that you're sharing and you're creating at this time in your life. So take this drawing and get yourself a special journal. And I like this size journal because it's a good size. It's kind of big. It's blank pages. It's just a black journal. But you can decorate it and make it wild and make it any way you want. And I just keep it with me. And I'll share some of the, my writings in it. But I'd like to, Michael to, you know, make any input that he'd like about this journal project. Well, it's what we said is our course, both the courses we teach are 12 weeks. Mary's is every week for 12 weeks or 14 weeks. And mine is three weekends with more, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, Sunday, so it's four times three. And they're all different. But one of the things we feel is that the 12 weeks or some amount of time is necessary for this process because what's happening is you start by not knowing anything about art and healing. We have in our class pre-med students, pre-nursing students, nursing graduate students who are working on the wards, ceramic artists, sculptors, and no one has healed themselves with art almost. So they're both, they're all on like a level playing field. And we just give them very simple experiences, find what needs to be healed, a medium, and do it. The journal is like your Play, your playground because you're not really answering necessarily answering the question what needs to be healed you're just finding what happens that day and you're playing with all different kinds of things someone's journal may be poetry it may turn completely into poetry some may turn into pictures of motorcycles and uh, because and, and if you trust where it's going and let your inner critic be the journal take is part of the process of taking you where you want to be in our course also we have a structure it's like the first thing we're doing today is just the first movements of your inner artist. And it maybe takes three weeks to really find the project. Every student does a project of what you want to heal and what media. And then it takes 12 weeks to do it. So in our book, we slowly, slowly, slowly help you do this because we really believe that the images that come from your inner center, your spirit, from God, from wherever images come from that heal you, take a while to happen. It doesn't happen in one day. You may feel a lot in one day. You may have like a revelation or nothing for three weeks, but your body and your mind is very changing. And the journal is one way it helps do it. Like this is a typical day. This is the tension that I was feeling on this day. There was pain. There was suffering. There was despair. And I just scribbled words and made colors and had an image and allowed myself to just express. And you can see it's kind of just what it is. And then you just use this journal as a way to, you know, allow yourself to begin literally a journey. Here's another image that I thought that you would find interesting. It's, it's my body and it has all the words inside my body that I'm holding in my pain. But you can see that it's just this piece. It's, it's expressed me. And what you'll find out when you make art is that it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to step back 
When I first started my work in painting, it was like I used my painting just to express my emotions and express things about myself that I couldn't understand. But the painting process allowed me to sort of get it out of my body, literally out of me. And it was just this expression of paint. And it was wild and it was garish and it was unformed and it was all over the place. But it was this release that allowed me to actually have a cathartic experience in releasing it. And that was a time in my life when I was in tremendous pain. So any, whatever you are in your life, wherever you are in this moment, your art will be a reflection. And what I believe is really important is when you begin to make art every day and work in your journal every day, and the 12-week program encourages you to do something creative every single day. Make art, write a poem. Each week is divided to where you engage in a particular modality. But the journal and your writing and your drawing and your creative process in the journal is whatever it needs to be. Also, there's an opportunity for you to figure out what it is in your life you really want to hold to use art as a way of healing. But this is the first step. So this is the beginning of the journey. So I want to invite you to um, begin this process. If you're watching this moment, if you're watching this video right now, you're watching it because you know this is the time for you to begin. You know it's a time for you to do something that you've always wanted to do. Something that you have not given yourself the space for. And today is the day. This is the invitation for you to become that artist. Become, tap into that creative wellspring of creativity. We are all creative beings. You are creative. You have a power for healing within you. And this is the beginning. And this is your journey. And we have had many experiences of working with many people. And I would love for you to share this, even if it's in silence. I want you to know that you're part of a community. You're not alone. You know, the voice, the book is our way, Michael and my way, of reaching out to you to be your guide, reaching out to you to invite you to begin this journey. And we actually feel that we are creating sacred space by holding you, wherever you are in the world, in our hearts. And I really do believe that. I really do believe that. I believe if this work resonates with you, I hold you in my heart. I guide you. We both do. And you are part of this community of Healing with the Arts. I'd like to invite you to check out our website www.healingwiththearts and join our community because I really we want to be together we want to get to know each other the book is a tool for you to transform your own life but also work with others and also create opportunities in your community to bring this work to your church bring this work to your support group bring this work to friends that you are going through something this is an opportunity this book is a guide for you to take it and anyone can create this 12-week program you are an artist I really too believe that you have everything you need to heal and of course life is complicated but this is also a powerful therapy that can make a tremendous difference in your life so I welcome you to this work and I invite you and I encourage you to really do this for yourself. It's the time. Should we, I don't know if there are any questions for people have talked to us. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. And I just wanted to show my drawing. I didn't have a piece of paper here, so I kind of stuck together a bunch of post-its. But oh, I found good. myself drawing this kind of Wow. Like a lot of flow. Wow. And I, the whole time you're talking, I'm like, okay, so what does this mean? And the words um, grace and flow and dancing and let go came to me. 
Mm -hmm. And um, it made me think of when I was a little kid, I actually used to do a lot of dance, a, a lot, all the time, and I loved it. It was one of my creative releases, and yeah. I have not done it in a very, very long time, and I'm I'm sitting here like, okay, I need to go sign, <laughs> find a dance class or do something like that because it really is, uh, it, it's so compelling to me. It's so intriguing. So thank you so much. Oh, I'm so, that is perfect. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly what we were hoping for because everyone has that, mm. that part of themselves. So this is reminding you that that part of yourself is one of the most beautiful and important parts of you. And it's yeah. so important for you to dance and return to your dance and be a dancer in your life every day. So just go home tonight and put the music <laughs> on and begin dancing. <laughs> I will. I will. It just sounds like so much fun. And the question that came up for me immediately, and of course because my thing is, I can now say my thing is dancing, um, is it something that needs to be shared with people or can it just be for you? It can be just for you. Okay. It can be something that you do for yourself in your own life. Mm -hmm. But it also is beautiful if you really are doing this dance. It is one of your gifts, you know, for you to share your dancing with someone else mm -hmm. would be one of the most beautiful gifts you could ever give anyone. But that sort of, you have to let it, I think beginning with yourself and reclaiming that part of yourself is the first step. Awesome. So that's what you do first. So okay, yeah. A lot of the major things about healing with arts that we try to do very early in the class, we do a guided imagery for releasing the inner critic and not worrying about this because someone has told us we're too clumsy to dance, we can't draw a straight line, we can't color within the boxes, we can't sing a note. And that person, that's that may be incorporated into our inner critic. Someone told us this or stopped us from making art. Well, we just stopped because we were in medical school and we couldn't play the piano anymore. And now we're saying, this is different. This is art to heal what needs to be healed in your life. Mm -hmm. There's no criticism and it's perfect what you do. So usually we do it first by ourselves. But like in our class, and we also, I want to add, in our way of working, there's minimal interpretation and minimal words. Like you draw that picture. From my point of view, you don't need to know what it means, whether it represents your mother, whether it, it's, you feel flow, that's what it is, but you don't even know that because you've experienced it. So somehow you went did this wild thing, you drew a line, you made a movement, and you were your child dancing. This is really beautiful. And then you can now, if you were working with us, you could go in our class, you would maybe dance, maybe cut out pictures of dancers and put them in your journal. Maybe uh, go to a dance club the next night. and. We have one woman who's a star in our work and a star in our book. She was in my class. She was studying academic psychology. She didn't know what her project would be, who she, what she would do. Her name is Ina. She's, we have the stories of everyone in the book, but they're real names and they're real people, so you actually get to meet them. And so she decided that her mother had been left by the father in a divorce and she wanted to have a beautiful mother. Mm -hmm. She brought her mother into the class for the final project sat her down, played music, and she hadn't danced since she was a child, really, and she hadn't danced ever in front of another person. And she did a loving dance around her mother's show, and she loved her, and that literally changed her life. It woke up a, the dancer within, and then she's actually now did a year studying with me, a year studying with Mary. She interned in Mary's class, She took, and now she's a healing dancer all over the world. Wow. And so it's, she's like discovered the healing dancer within, but some people, you don't have to change your life, your marriage, your job, but it just frees. And in, in, our, in our life these days, our lives are very holistic. You can be working at a publisher and doing a dance class at night very easily, or doing Tai Chi, or doing yoga, or doing a nutrition thing. And for us, art is one of the most powerful interventions. It wouldn't be in half of the cancer centers of America if it wasn't. Mm. And we're out with a major treatment for Alzheimer's with a major treatment for post-traumatic stress. This is big time stuff now. And like huge ones like um, Eve Ensler's Billion Women Rising for Against Rape and Violence, it's a dance piece. It's a worldwide community dance piece. So when you dance, it's a prayer. We say it's not a performance, it's a prayer. Mm -hmm. You're dancing for your spirit. You're dancing for every woman on earth. You're dancing for your little child within. 
deep and beautiful and beyond words. Just like beyond words. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Well, before we um, before we close, and we're getting close to the, the end, but we do have a couple more questions. Um, I just wanted to show everybody, this is Michael and Mary's book, Healing with the Arts. Um, it is a wonderful book. It's exactly as they said. It, it breaks it down into the 12-week program. It's very simple. All you need is this. And they have actually put this together with two free audio downloads. So you get the book at actually it's actually at a 20% discount, so it's only $14.40, as well as two free audio downloads. Um, would you guys like to talk about those audio downloads a little bit? Well, the first audio download that I did, I did with a wonderful musician here in my community, Kathy DeWitt. And it's really called the beginning of your journey. So it really is a, an opportunity for you to go to that place where you're beginning this journey with this healing with the he, healing with the arts. So it's my voice with music, and it's something that you can play each day that really allow and invites you to begin this process. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that's important is that you feel that we're guiding you, and the book is your guide, and we want the book to have a voice. And we want that voice of the book to be personal. So I personally want to invite you to do this work. And that's the first download. And it's very beautiful. And I hope you enjoy it. Awesome. But also on our website, healingwiththearts.com, is the world of art and healing. So deeply and three-dimensionally. There's something called the gallery that has many, many videos of our dancers dancing, of people doing all of the things that we've talked about. And it also has a blog that has examples of programs all over the world. If, if you look up Alzheimer's, you'll see the Alzheimer's Society of America and how to use art with, an, with your grandmother with Alzheimer's. And in my class, one of the students had a grandfather with Alzheimer's. He picked him up, he took him to his house, he wrote a guitar piece that he played it, and the man woke up from a, almost like a comatose state and danced. It was so striking. He made a video and showed it to the class. So we have, art and healing is a whole world that we're now really inviting you to come into. And the book is, a, is your guide. And it's also, for me, it's a voice of something greater than us. It's like, not Mary and I, it's, it's art and healing, Claudia. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to tell you about is on the website, inside the book, are videos. There are videos and demonstrations oh, of video. people making art each week. So on in the book itself, if you have a smartphone, you can put your your smartphone right up to the micro tab and you'll be able to see a video or you can just go to the website healing with the arts and all the videos are there and we're always uploading more information and we have a blog so we want to invite you to be part of this community and we want you to share your art because sharing your art we may, may not may be together in a group but we have a virtual world that we can share and show each other and share our art with. That's great. Well, and if you would like to grab that bundle, it's a great, it's a really wonderful deal because you're even, you're getting the book for, for a discount as well as those two wonderful audio downloads. Um, and again, it's $14.40, a 20% discount, and you can get that at www.beyondword.com forward slash healing with the arts, all one word, all put together. And again, if you do have questions, we do have only seven minutes left, but if you do have questions, please submit them to hashtag BWPresents or you can submit them in the Google Hangout um, Q&A app. Please do that now so we can be sure to get your questions answered. I was curious, how does this work, um, like parents with children, like if a parent has a, a child who is going through something or whatever else, does, can, can they do it without the child necessarily knowing what's going on? Well, Mark, go ahead. Sorry, go on, man. No, go ahead. I, I, what I wanted to share with, um, in, in my program, one of my programs, we have had mothers who for what they needed to heal was their relationship with their child. For example, mm -hmm. one woman came in and she worked full time and she, what she really felt she needed was to spend time with her child and her children when she got home. So what her art project was, was making art with her, her children. So they had an art night. They had a family art night where they collaged every night, and it was something that became part of their family life. And what she brought in and shared with all of us were these incredible pieces of work. 
And then she got so excited that she ended up for Thanksgiving. She brought all the pay, all the the work that they did, and the whole family, the whole extended family, made art. So it's something that you can do to build relationships. Mm. And also, one woman had a child who was autistic, and she did finger painting because and and the child would do finger painting and she created this environment where there could be all this mess and everything <laughs> and then you know it it worked it worked so it's really exploring what works in your life mm -hmm. and exploring those edges with people with your children and engaging them and inviting them to do it and you know it's so simple mm -hmm. it's really as simple as you know if you wanted to bring it to your family it's as simple as singing a song to mm -hmm. your child as you put your child in bed or reading them a story. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it really is. It's mm -hmm. making your life this beautiful creative process. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as the art of living. It's the art of healing. So it's the same. That's, it really is. And I, Michael, I love what you were saying at the very beginning. You were talking about um, turning on that creativity and how that creativity opens a different way of being or a different part of your brain and um, yeah. you're speaking about Alzheimer's patients and things like that and I have a, a grandma who's very old she doesn't have Alzheimer's but she is kind of forgetful um, and I was I was looking to see okay what kind of what kind of healing what kind of art and healing can I do with her and so does it she already does a lot of creative things um, not necessarily things that I find creative but would it be more powerful for her to for me to work with her on what she already does or for her to work with me? I think in the beginning it's always important to follow her lead. Mm, okay. You want to go to a place where she goes inside of herself to experience her joy, mm -hmm. what it is that she resonates with, and that you participate in holding that and encouraging her in the very beginning. And then you allow it you know, to lead when you get into that place where that where she's being creative, you have the pot. You have the opportunity to suggest something that you want to do, that you love, mm -hmm. and you create this reciprocal, caring relationship. So I think one of the important things is when you start the creative, when you start this work, if you're starting with yourself, do what you love to do, do what you want to do, mm -hmm. and and when you want to work with your grandmother, do what she wants to do, and do what she loves to do. And you create that. And what's really powerful is that you're sharing your presence. And what's really healing about art is not only the making of it, but the sharing of it. Mm. So, you know, you receive the gift of her own creativity. Mm. And that's very important. Oh, that's wonderful. I just want to go run over to her right now and sew something. She loves to sew. That is her, her creative outlet, Perfect. for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always said I can't sew straight, but you know, whatever, that's okay. <laughs> um, so, and one of the things that I've been curious about as well is uh, here at Beyond Words, we are a very creative atmosphere. We we are constantly, you know, we create books, we create DVDs, mm -hmm. music, things like that. Um, how do you suggest bringing it into an office in particular? Because oh. there's not really that space. Like, you know, you come to work, you sit down at your desk, you do, but how do you how do you incorporate it into an office? Well, you know, music is the first thing that comes to me, but uh, you know, everybody likes different music. Mm. So, but I think it would be really great if you did have an opportunity in the office where you could create a collaborative piece of art that when people need a break, you know, like get a big canvas and when people get a break, they actually make art or they can add to this collage for example where you get a sense they actually someone did that they they put it on a, it was on a busy nursing floor they put a big canvas up and a big bulletin board and everybody started making collages and they started putting them up so people got a sense of each other and learn things about each other they didn't even know mm -hmm. so that's an easy way to start is a collaborative piece another great idea and you know you can think of these ideas is that you write poems you know, there's a week where, you know, people, I, I think this is really fun, I'm just thinking about this right now, where there would be a poem posted at the beginning of the week, anonymously, and then at <laughs> the end of the week, you have to figure out who wrote the poem. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, there's so many great things you can do. Yeah. 
you know, where you make oh, art, yeah, you know, on. you do movement, you do movement on at lunchtime, you know, you mm -hmm. put on music and you dance. I mean, there's so many great ideas. You just have to give people permission in your office to make suggestions mm -hmm. and do it. All right. And Michael, did you have something to add? Also, when art and healing started in the big hospitals, it was called Art on the Walls. It was before people made art with patients, they hung it. So the whole hospital, instead of becoming sterile, long, white, glossy hallways, became the art of the patients, the art of famous artists so that was mm -hmm. relaxing. And the atmosphere becomes like an art gallery or museum, but alive. So one way to do it is just to hang everyone's art everywhere and mm -hmm. change it and move it and, and encourage and, and it's healing art. You're doing it to heal your office. You're doing it to make, I think intention is actually very beautiful in art mm -hmm. and healing. We're making art to heal ourselves, others, community, and the earth from our heart, from spirit, and our prayers. That's what we're mm -hmm. doing. Like That's something. wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for being on, and thank you so much for that wonderful workshop. I am going to go and, and dance my little heart away. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about that. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know um, that, again, we do have the wonderful bundle that Mary and Michael have put together, including their book, Healing with the Arts, it, and the two audio downloads. And that, again, is at www.beyondword.com forward slash healing with the arts, all one word. And again, that's a 20% off discount from just the price of the book, and you get those two free downloads as well, which you can't get anywhere else. And then I hope you guys come back and join us next week. Next week we're going to have Penelope Smith on. She is a, the, an author of several books, but most well known is um, When Animals Speak. The amazing thing is that we are actually going to have people from Beyond Words, myself included, bring pictures of their animals, and she is an animal communicator, so she's going to have some conversations with our animals, and we have a lot of very uh, desperate mm -hmm. animal owners that really want some answers, so we're <laughs> going to have that conversation, and then as well, if you would like us to have Penelope talk with your animal, please let us know. Again, use the hashtag BWPresents, or you can always send us an email at info at beyondword.com. So we look forward to seeing you next week, and again, Michael and Mary, thank you so much. Thank you. This was wonderful. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye.